So welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video down here in Brighton, sunny Cheshire in the simplydive.net community hub. We've got this Nissan J11 Qashqai, not a Micra, um, in the workshop. We've got approval off the, the owner to remove the bumper so we can access the radar here, the radar module at the front of the car, so we can do some testing and stuff like that. We've got with the tool we're using on it today, we used the Bosch KTS in the last video in order just to give us a little bit of variety and show the versatility of the different tools that we use we've got another one today from our awesome partners Hella Gutman so we've got the Mega Max X connected today so you can see here and you remember it's the Bluetooth scan module here connected to the car mounted on the window can you remember why we put it why it's got a facility for mounting it on the window glass can you remember have you been watching closely so we've got the Mega Max X plugged in the scan tool. We've done a global vehicle scan on it. We've got four trouble codes, two in the lane camera and two in the radar. We've got Charlie One Bravo 00, Charlie One Bravo 0 Alpha, Uniform 1000, Charlie One Alpha 01. They're in the radar and the lane tracking camera. Um, the lower ones are to do with power supply and the upper ones are to do with network messages, network problems, okay? So, using all data, we've gone through, um, gone through all data, we're looking at the wiring diagram and also the trouble code description. So what logs the fault code, the troubleshooting procedure from the manufacturer. Basically, it's check power and grounds and can. If that doesn't, if, if none of them, if they're all okay, it needs a module, okay? The worrying thing with that is the question with the big question mark we've got to have is why would the camera and the radar module both go down at the same time i've got my hands dirty i'm covered in scratches i've actually taken the bumper off there's no sign really of any crash damage or anything like that so we, we've got to think now what's going on what could be the possible common denominator if we had the whiteboard going that would be a big red flag at the top yeah, why have these modules both got a power supply problem? There's a question there, answers in the comments below. So, looking at the all data wiring diagram, this is the distance sensor or the radar. We can see here uh, M18, we've got a ground on pin one, and on pin eight, we've got our power supply that goes back up to the same fuse. Now, just bear with me there, you stay there. We had a great question from one of our viewers the other day. So this is that feed coming, that's feeding the radar in that direction. And it's coming up from, the, from, from these fuses over here, okay? And we had, we had a great question. So, well, why, why are two fuses supplying the same module? And I said it'll be to, due to configuration. And we can see here we've got OS or IS, yeah? Depending on whether the car has got start, stop fitted or not, it's depending on which leg of the circuit it gets its power from. So if it's with start stop, it's on the IS line, it's fed from fuse 73. And if it's without stop start, yeah, this monitor unit is fed from a different fuse. Okay, so that it's the variation on the on the diagram. So I'll just scan, I'll drop that wiring diagram back down. Get my steps in today. <laughs> so we've got a power feed coming in on pin eight. We've got a ground on pin one. You can see here we've got network, we've got network lines as per the last video on two and three, going back to the body control module. And then we've got two network lines here on five and six going to chassis control. Okay, so we've got two sets of high speed can or two sets of control area network wiring, a power and a ground. Exactly the same procedure as we did before. We can measure it using, using the voltmeter and stuff like that. We've got the measurement unit from Hell Gutman. So this is a Bluetooth measurement unit and scope. Also capable of doing high voltage. You can see the high voltage cables there on the back of the trolley, the red and the black one stuck up. 
Yeah, so we can do we can do safe and secure high voltage measurements with it. We can also do low voltage measurements. All Bluetooth. Great bit of kit from Helen Buckman. So what we want to do now is we go into uh, measurement. I'll turn the ignition on. So I'll turn the ignition on. We go into measurements. We're going to be doing a low voltage measurement. So it's loading the measurements. You can see here, this is the back of it. So it tells you where to connect. Channel one is the blue wire. Channel two is the red wire. We want to see both of those on voltage. Okay, you can see we can also measure current uh, via different probes and pressure and resistance. If we if we zero work, we can actually do a resistance measurement but we're interested in voltage. So we're gonna start measurement. So that's that. We, all, we always need to do a sanity check, a plausibility check. So test your te test equipment to make sure it's working. So I've, I've already done that. So using the hubby tools front probes, we're going on to pin one there, which is our ground. And pin eight, which is there for our power. Okay, and all I'm going to do is going to put one on one, one on the other. We're using the auto auto diagnose um, breakout lead to give us grounds referencing battery voltage. You can see channel one, we've got battery voltage, channel two, we've got no voltage, so on earth, right? Let's just swap those leads around, make sure that our equipment is capable of working. It is, so both, both channels are measuring correctly. And then if we really, really want to, we can just measure it using one channel. So if I take the ground out of there now for the blue channel. And put it in there. Yeah, what's happened? We're out of range, right? I've got my leads the wrong way around. So we can see there, we've got battery voltage now. It is on battery support. We've got the 120 amp top on battery support on. So it's measuring. We can also see whether it's, a, it's capable of carrying a current the same way we did the other day. By using the trusty test light. So does it light up, yes or no? Yes, it does, okay? So that's only 150 milliamps, bear that in mind. We should really now put a bigger load on the 21 watt bulb, just to make, just to verify. I've already done that, it's okay. This is for demonstration purposes only. So power and ground are good. What we then need to do is we're going to go into pins two and three. So that there is pin two. That there is pin three. Had another great question the, um, the other day off one of our one of our viewers, um, saying about front probing. The problem if we're back probing, if we're going into the back of a connector, we can actually repair a loose or damaged terminal by going into the back, or we can make damage. So much easier to use the correct size pin and go in through the front. And let, let's see what we've got there. So we connect our scope back up or our, should I say our measurement tool. So we're referencing battery ground again. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna find the other probe. Like that, like that, like that. It's there, and then the test line. So one in the red, one in the blue. And we can see now roughly we've got two and a half volts, three and a half volts, one and a half volts, okay? It's measuring very, very fast. The great thing about the heller is we can just do auto set and then it will automatically just set it to the fastest time base and the most appropriate level. So at this, at this moment in time, that's good. 
what we can see here is roughly we've got can high going from two and a half volts to three and a half volts and we've got can low going from roughly one and a half volts to two and a half volts and the signals if i pause it we can see the signals are roughly the same okay and they're opposite if you like so they're they're symmetrically opposite it's like it's like you've opened a, a book out you're looking at a mirror so they're mirroring each other if we want to go even further than that we can actually go into one of the channels okay we can decrease the time base so we can look at the individual packets of data okay go back to measurement and we can see it in a lot more detail so the mega max x and the and the voltage measurement device great great bluetooth option another option for the workshop so <clears throat> we can see there we've got a valid can signal on two and three let's have a look at what we've got on five and six being very very careful not to damage the so this, these are the other two cam wires on five and six now you can see we've got a different can signal they're a lot more spread out than on the uh, than on the other one we've got a different can signal but we can see also there if we pause it yeah these are actually mirroring each other as well so we've got good valid can signals on both networks we've got a good power and ground so the big question from the beginning of the video, why are both modules reporting a power supply issue? What's the one thing that's common to both of, both of those? Could it be that there's a voltage drop when the vehicle is starting off? Because these codes will clear. It's only when you restart the vehicle that we get all these voltage supply codes. Could it be that under starting conditions, the voltage is dropping so low that it's logging the fault codes? So. We need to have a look at this under the situations that the faults are occurring. So what happens when everything's connected and we actually start up? What do the module supply voltages go down to? Just, uh, test that. So we'll use another, we'll use the oscilloscope. We'll probably get the Pico on that so we can zoom in and out and measure it more correctly. What is the voltage dropping down to on cranking? And from our awesome community partners, Varta Batteries, their hashtag it all starts with Varta test every battery could it be a su such a simple thing as the battery is expired so in other words the voltage is dropping down below 10 volts and it's logging all DTCs on start up so hope you enjoyed this video tech tip Monday yeah we're not really very good on a Monday but here we are so technical tip for Monday thanks for watching join our community at simplydive.net or book your problem car in with us today by using the message feature on our page. Thanks for watching. You're awesome.